I'm not really proud to admit it, but I've tried pretty much every pickup technique known to man. And yes, some of them are really great. It can really help you improve yourself. However, a lot of them are really gimmicky or flat out just don't work or even make your game and your entire life for that matter worse than when you even started. Because even if you don't use all the weird stuff that's out there and you actually do get results from some of the pickup tactics, oftentimes you feel like it's not really you. It's just this PUA version of yourself that women are really getting to know, not the real you. In fact, I actually met a self-proclaimed pickup coach who became suicidal because of all of the game tactics that he learned, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second. And I'm sure since you're watching this video that you've learned some picked up techniques that have actually helped you develop yourself because of a deeper quality that the technique drew out of you. And likewise, some techniques that were quite damaging. We're at a park here in Miami, just finished a three day boot camp. We had seven new guys who absolutely crushed it. I'm so proud of you guys. And we had four or five two year trainers, guys that go on multiple boot camps with us and help out. And they were helping out uh, this weekend. And dude, these guys are just killing it in their life, in their dating lives. It's like they have reverse approach anxiety. They see a beautiful woman and they have to go. They get anxiety if I tell them they can't go. I'm like, wait, 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 just wait a second. And then you can go, no, 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 I gotta go. I wanna go talk to her. And that's, that's a good feeling and a good problem to have. It's not really a problem, but it can happen for you too. Just becomes habit. The problem with most pickup advice out there is they tell you to say this. They give you lines and routines, and most of those routines are other people's experiences. Stories that worked for them because it was theirs and it was interesting, so it got a reaction, and then they write about it and say, hey, you know, this works, say this. And when I did that, I felt really authentic because I was literally lying to women and using somebody else's stories. I remember going up to girls in a bar in Newport Beach, California and saying, hey, I just got back from China and the crazy thing happened, blah, blah, blah. And that was before I actually went to China. I had never, I'd never been there. I'm just saying something that I read and you know, it was designed to get a reaction. The problem with it was it did get a reaction. It was interesting, so I thought it worked. And so I just kept learning more and more and more. I thought that was the solution. I just need better routines. I need more routines. And what happened is I got really up in my head at one point. I had so much information. It was like information overload, like a file cabinet with so much information I couldn't access the right file at the right time. And so I would get nervous and be like, you know, trying to think, 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 and all the energy was in my head instead of being right there, present, grounded in the moment with my energy in my body, feeling my body, because that is the way you connect with women. You cannot connect with women if you're thinking about what to say next and you're overanalyzing the situation or you're trying to get the right file out of your file cabinet and you know get the right line and say the perfect thing. And the thing is, it doesn't even matter if you say the perfect thing. I watch my videos, my interactions with women, and I'm like, ugh, I could have said something way better than that. You know, I'll come up with something great afterwards, but it doesn't matter because when you're in the present moment, she can feel that. She can feel that you're right there with her, connecting with her, and that's what matters the most. One of the problems I see is that a lot of guys become a pickup artist. They think it's something they have to like turn on or off. They go to the club and now it's like pickup mode. Now they talk to beautiful women. Instead of it just being rooted in who they are and their identity, when you're grounded and comfortable, really, just in your masculine identity, talking to women just becomes natural. It's just who you are. You don't have to turn it on and off. You don't have to see it as like, oh, now I'm doing pickup. No, it's just you're a guy who talks to girls. And taking that one step further, a lot of guys get their validation from sleeping with women. And pickup books don't necessarily tell you to do that, but that often becomes the outcome as you're learning those kind of techniques because it's like techniques to get a reaction from a woman to eventually sleep with her. It's like 
you know, helping you speed up that process. And therefore, you, you see, and it kind of hints at, you know, that's the reward, is you gotta sleep with women, and sleep with the hot women, and sleep with as many women as possible, which reinforces the damaging identity that you get your self-worth and your value from sleeping with beautiful women or sleeping with as many women as possible instead of just getting it from within. Just knowing that you are a cool, awesome guy and if she goes home with you, awesome, that's cool. You'll have a great experience. If she doesn't, awesome, you'll go home and get some rest. It doesn't matter to you either way. But when you're studying a bunch of pickup, 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 oftentimes that doesn't become the case. You feel really, you know, discouraged when you're talking to a beautiful woman and it seems like she's into you and then she doesn't want to go home with you or a friend pulls her away or whatever. So instead, you got to just release that feeling, release that emotion and be happy with the outcome no matter what. And this brings me into the next thing, which is guys relying on techniques to get the girl to get the reaction they want, or the outcome they want rather, instead of relying on their mindset, their beliefs, their identity, who they are as a person, their vibe, just becoming the type of man, embodying the presence, the masculine presence of a man who is attractive to women, versus relying on just some technique, saying this thing, or doing this thing, to get this reaction, to get this outcome, to get this goal. Instead, become the type of man who is just awesome, the type of man that you love to the core, and the type of man that is attractive to beautiful women, and then it just becomes natural. You meet women everywhere. You approach women with ease, there's no hesitation, and you're just surrounded by beautiful women. They become just part of your life instead of using tricks and techniques to get them. Okay, this girl's really cute. I saw her earlier. Excuse me, real quick. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Hi YouTube. I'm gonna maybe make one in the future. Well, I don't know. What's we'll your see. channel? I don't have one yet, but like... All right, stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put her channel in the link down below. Nope. When it's there. Yeah, when it's there. All right, well listen, I gotta go back to my friends who are actually like filming something. Yeah, I know that. But, oh yeah. <laughs> See, you totally noticed me too. Yeah, no I didn't. Yeah. It's meant to be. Aww. We're gonna get married now. That's, that's the next step. Well, listen, before I go, I don't know anything about you. Tell me one special, unique thing about you. One special. Besides your finger. My fingers. fingers. My fingers. I like that, Do Thank the you. dollar signs. Yeah. But Dollar bills, y'all. You know. <laughs> All right. I'll, yeah, I'll text you later. Up, so. <laughs> All right. I actually knew a guy. He was a pickup coach, and he had memorized eight hours of material. And he would go to bars and clubs, and you know, say the same kind of stuff over and over again for hours. I mean, he could even, you know, he even had material for dates. And he actually got really depressed because he felt like these women weren't sleeping with him because they were attracted to him. It's because they were attracted to the way he was projecting himself, right? He was wearing like this mask. It was all this fake stuff that he was saying that wasn't really his. It wasn't true to his identity. And of course, after he ran out of material, which was about, I think, the second date, typically, second or third date, then he had nothing else cool to say. It was like he was out. He was done. And women would lose interest in him because he would start getting really insecure. So he actually became quite suicidal. Next is DHV stories. Oh my gosh, these are bad. Because it means demonstrating higher value. You should be high value, but a high value man doesn't have to demonstrate that he's high value. He doesn't have to prove himself to anybody. He doesn't have to try to win her over or try to impress women. That's the issue, it's the mindset. The mindset of I gotta do this thing, I gotta say this thing to get the girl or get a reaction is already shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> and instead, when you're just a cool, awesome, confident, calm, badass, you don't have to do really anything. It's just who you are, it's your vibe that gets her. So if you think you have to demonstrate high value 
or try to impress women, whether it's covertly or overly, overly definitely doesn't work, but even if you try to like embed these little DHV stories to show her how awesome you are, usually has the opposite effect. Even just using all the PUA jargon, I think is somewhat damaging. There's nothing wrong with like calling a group of people a set or you know, saying this is a target rich environment. This is what I call a target rich environment. Nothing wrong with this, that's not what I'm saying, but when you think of it so tactical, like there's a five set and I need to go and disarm the obstacle so that I can isolate the target and AMOG, the alpha male of the group. Then it becomes like this tactical thing. And it's like you're this mission of like, I don't know, Mission Impossible or something, which sounds kind of cool, but it makes you like robotic. Now I'm gonna give you two of the worst pickup tactics in my opinion. One is negs. Neg is like a negative compliment. And again, you're trying to get a reaction, but Really, the, it's a, again, it's the mindset that is so bad because it's trying to put her down a few pegs. Like, you view yourself as lower than her and that she's like a nine or a 10 and you're like a five. And so you're trying to bring her down to your shitty level, which think about that. That's an awful way to see yourself and view male-female dynamics. Instead, when you see yourself as a 10, you're never trying to put anybody down. You're always trying to bring people up. And that's what true high value and high status people do. They try to bring people up to their level. They're curious about them. And you know they wanna, wanna challenge them a little bit to, to bring out some of their coolness instead of trying to you know, put them down. And they never try to brag or try to impress people because they already know they're the shit. So when you know you're the shit, you don't have to prove to people that you're the shit. Here we are shopping for shoes. Like always. Why do girls love to shop so much? Jen, why do girls love to shop? Because maybe need new shoes. Because <laughs> she needs new shoes? I don't think so. She has so many shoes. I actually have a theory about it that uh, you know women were gatherers, men were hunters back in the day and shopping, whether it's for groceries or shoes or clothing or whatever, it's kind of like going to the, the meadow and looking for the berries or whatever they ate back in those days, vegetables, fruits, whatever. And it's kind of like just this primal ingrained thing in them from prehistoric days that they, they have to go, you know? Like the shoe store is their new meadow. Are you ready to hear the worst of the worst pickup techniques? In my opinion, is how to deal with what they call LMR, last minute resistance, when you finally get a beautiful woman back to your place, but she doesn't totally feel like going all the way, for whatever reason. Um, you know, she's feeling like, oh, maybe she needs to play a little hard to get, or maybe she just wanted to come back. She really likes you and she wants to hook up, but she just, doesn't want to have sex. So when sex is the goal, Ooh, that looks delicious. So you need all these tactics and techniques to make it happen, right? Because that's the goal when it comes to like pick up mindset, which again is a really bad mindset. It should be like whatever. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Honestly, like guys that get laid all the time. They don't care whether it happens. I mean, they care a little bit. Yeah, they prefer, if they meet a beautiful woman, they prefer to, to have sex. But if it doesn't happen, she doesn't feel like it, or her friend, you know, they're at the club and the friend pulls her away at the last minute, they're just like, all right, cool. Let's go talk to somebody else. It's, they're not they're like affected by it. So anyways, when it comes to pickup, they teach freeze out, you're getting last minute resistance from the girl, she's at your house, you're making out, but she doesn't want to go any further than that, then you gotta have the cheese on the salad. So, <laughs> she doesn't want to go, you know, she doesn't want to go all the way, and the freeze out is basically taking away the good emotions from her, 
like, you know, stopping what you're doing. She's comfortable making out, but not going further. So you stop making out, you flip on the lights, you get off the bed, and you jump on the computer, and you check your email. You totally freezed her out. Basically trying to teach her, like, a lesson that the fact that she said no to taking it further was bad for you. It's totally affected. Like, you're, you're coming from a place that you're really affected by it. And A, it's probably gonna make her, it's probably not gonna work. She's gonna be like, geez, okay, this guy is really affected by the fact that I won't go all the way with him. That's not attractive. It's much attractive, a lot more attractive to be unaffected, to be like, cool, we don't have to do anything that you don't wanna do, anything that you're, <laughs> don't drop your fork. Anything you're not comfortable with is cool with me. You know, we can take it slow. And actually meaning it, not just saying that as a technique, but actually meaning it. Tell her that anytime she doesn't feel comfortable to just tell you. And that, ironically enough, usually will make her comfortable. She just wants to feel like she has the option to say no at any moment and that you will respect her decision and that you will stop turning on the lights and showing her that, you know, that was a bad move on her part or taking away those good emotions from her. It's coming from a, a real, like a place of scarcity and manipulation versus coming from a place of love and respect. That's gonna work much better. And it's a lot more authentic and honest instead of, you know, manipulating her. So don't do that. Woman doesn't wanna go all the way. Don't do a freeze out. Instead, just keep talking to her. Kiss her some more. Tell her if she's not comfortable with anything, that's totally cool. Just tell me if you're not comfortable with anything and I'll stop, I'll stop at any moment. I absolutely wanna respect you. And that will make her respect you more, make her like you more, and probably make her want to take things to a more intimate level. So listen guys, the point is you don't need to use a bunch of pickup techniques. What it really comes down to is who you are to your core, how you see yourself, your identity, and your relationship with yourself. Like, do you love yourself or are you insecure? How do you see yourself? And when you work on those things, and it takes a lot longer, pickup is like this way to just kinda get some quick results. I'm putting like a band-aid over the problem versus actually healing the wound. When you do that, your results get way better. And we work on the outer game on our boot camps. We give you, you know, helpful ways to take the conversation, not lines and routines and things to memorize, but a guideline, a system, so you know what to do. And you know, we tweak your body language and your outer game, but we also work, especially on our seven day boot camps, we work on your inner game as well because that's the foundation and that's what's gonna get you the results in all parts of your life in the long run, your mindset, your beliefs, and your identity. So. Don't skip that part to do the work. It's absolutely worth it. So check out our bootcamp schedule, sign up for a seven day, make sure to subscribe to this channel, click that bell notification icon, and I also got a free cheat sheet for you down in the description and to the right of this screen. If you actually wanna know what to say without using a bunch of lines and routines, but just have a few guidelines here and there, then make sure to download our conversation cheat sheet because it gives you a bunch of more authentic ways to carry the conversation so you know what to do and what to say and you don't worry about running out of things to say but again when it comes down to it it's all about the inner game so don't neglect it download the cheat sheet to the right of the screen and i hope to see you at a boot camp soon cheers